Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, kicking off a pick five on Haskell Saturday with graded stakes actions. The Molly Pitcher, a grade three, $500,000 is the purse. We're going a mile and a 16th. Let's take a peek at this field. We're gonna have a big favorite in here into the defending champion in this race. And it's one of the top fillies and mares in the country in search results who is basically using the same schedule that she did in 2022. She ran really well in the Ogden Phipps. Yeah. She came here, benefited from a class drop and won easily. Yeah, she's just gonna, she's gonna be a handful in this race. She hasn't won a race since she took the Molly pitcher last summer up here. And she did that uh, very convincingly. But man, did she run well several times in some really, really tough spots. She's going to take a ton of beating. She has great tactical speed yeah. as well. As we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, Love should show some speed for trainer Brendan Wall. She's won her last three races by giant margins, but she's yeah. now taking a big step up in class. Search results won't be far away. Yeah, that's the good thing about the favorite here, Dan. She's not going to be on the lead in this race, but she won't be compromised no matter how fast they go in front of her. Misty Valor just takes placing two starts back in the Allaire DuPont at Pimlico going a mile and an eighth and maybe moved a little bit too soon last time out at Thistledown. She's traded decisions now with Le DeVita. She has respectable buyers and an advantageous inside post. Yeah, I wonder how much of an excuse she really has for that most recent start. Maybe she does have one, Dan, and if she does, her prior two races uh, for trainer Mike Maker, especially since he's sort of taught her to sit off the pace a little bit and make a run from, from just off of it, I think it's really worked out for her. Her form right now is pretty good. Falconettes have been a bit of an in and outer. She's a multiple stakes winner at a mile and an eighth, and I wonder if that's her, her best distance. She did run in the Allaire DuPont at that distance last time out, and I just couldn't find an excuse. I know Interstate Daydream is very good, but Falconette was right up close to that slow pace and just didn't kick home. Yeah, she didn't run well in that race. I, I, I really question how good this horse is, Dan. I realize that she's won a couple of nice races. She's been close in a couple of other nice races for Pletcher, and she does have good tactical speed. I'm just not sure that she's that good. Chad Brown trained search results. He also has the three distinctly possible, seeking her third consecutive win. Here's her most recent start, the Serena Song at Monmouth. And Chad was pretty impressed that this filly got up close to the pace. The fractions weren't very fast, and then she is able to outduel the runner-up and get down to the wire with a victory. By far, her career best yeah. buyer speed figure now she's got to do more. I liked that performance from her last time, though. Yeah, she did get a good trip in that race. But uh, the horse that she was chasing on the lead, uh, who was favored in there, really picked up the pace around the second term, uh, second turn, and distinctly possible went right with her and then beat her pretty handily at the end. She's always had potential. It feels like there's a chance she's starting to put it all together now, and Chad steps her right up. Chad says she's bigger and stronger now than she was as a two-year-old, as a three-year-old. He's looking forward to a good race, even with search results in this field. And here's the Ogden fifth last time out and it's just becoming a sad story for search results in these major grade one stakes races she runs so well each and every time and one gets her and in this time again it was Clarier. yeah Clarier is gonna uh, be able to close down most of the Phillies and mares in this division though Dan this is another great performance for search results and one where she just sort of came away empty-handed still couldn't pick up uh, that grade one win that second grade one win but she ran an excellent race last time she's way the horse to beat here. i wonder if last time was the time for the five le davida who even with search results as resume brings the best last buyer speed figure to the field at 101 in the allaire dupont two back completely compromised by yep. pace yet still running on in the end to only get beat a length last time out in the lady jacqueline got a really nice ground saving trip she doesn't change leads in the stretch she didn't have to against that field. She beat three next out winners. She ran fine in that race. Um, but, you know, it, it really set up a little bit better for her, though, Dan. And I realized she was only five to two that day. But that was a great time to have her against that field off of a, an effort two back that is way better than it looks on paper. She's good. This race may not set up quite as well for her. Loved this race three times this year. She has won those races by a combined, oh, about a 26 and a quarter lengths, including a 12 length score last time out. This is a half sister to Maxfield. So she's bred to be a nice source. And if she can somehow get to the lead, Maybe she's good enough. We're going to find out how good she is because this is the ultimate class test for her. Yeah, this is a really big class test for her. There's no knocking what she's done so far this year. Obviously, she's going to go to the front here, but she's not, you know, what has she been? One to two, two to five, one to two in those last three wins. She's not going to be that kind of price in here. This is way tougher. I talked to Shug McGay here earlier this week. He said he's been pointing the seven first to act for this race. He said he could have run her in an allowance up at Saratoga. Said that track's so deep and tiring right now that maybe a mile and an eighth off the layoff would be a bit too far for uh, first to act. So she runs here. She did some good things last year. I mean, listen, she was overmatched in the Bell Dame. Battle Bling ran, uh, ran her off her feet in the turn back the yeah. alarm. But I think she can set a really good trip in this race. She probably can. She was pretty disappointed in her most recent start, but there's been a layoff since then. She's obviously very lightly raced still. 
can obviously take a step forward in here. I'm probably the wrong person to listen to about her, Dan, because I've never really liked her, but she's obviously better than I've ever given her credit for. Shereen DeVoe has some really nice horses in her care, including the number eight shotgun hottie who scored the Lady's Secret last time out by open lengths. And this horse has done well in her career. She's multiple graded stakes placed. She was second in the Monmouth Oaks last year. By far, this was her most visually impressive performance. She got a really good trip sitting off of a slow pace, but she jogged home. Yeah, she was really impressive. I agree with you. That was a, a very uh, compelling performance from her two starts back. She was in the distinctly possible race, didn't really get any position in there, and then just sort of never really made an impact. But I think you could be forgiving for that, especially in light of the most recent start. We're going to step her back up here, Dan. She's a little bit underrated, and she can't can be close to the pace. Top pick time. We're kicking off a pick five. Lots of folks are singling search results. I'll probably single search results too. I'm not betting against her. If there. I had to take a small stab against her, I am going to use Shotgun Hottie because I really love the way she won that last race. She is going to have to pick it up against search results, yep. but maybe she can complete the exact at a decent number. Search results will try to make it two in a row at Monmouth Park in the Molly Pitcher on Saturday.